Hey everybody, welcome back to Wow Mom Cooking. Today is our Valentine's show. We are being brought to you by PMLBmedia.com. Check them out for their mid-season lineup. But until then, what we're gonna do is get started on a Valentine's dinner. We are going to be making a rack of lamb, some mashed potatoes with some little red in it to make it a little more Valentine's Day, and some fresh baby broccoli. And I'm even gonna show you how to make a really quick dessert that looks fabulous and is definitely Valentine's. So grab your pens, your papers, and your aprons, and let's get cooking with WOW. overnight in a buttermilk wash. I'm gonna put the recipe up on the website, but simply it is a, a container of buttermilk. It has some mint in here, some rosemary, some thyme, and a little bit of salt and pepper. So this we are going to take out of here and let it rest and come to room temperature while we get everything else ready. And I wanna show you guys that we wanna take off any extra fat. So we're gonna take this out, take a look at it, and see if there's some extra fat we need to cut off. Smells really good. Oh yeah, there's also uh, about half an onion in here chopped up. I think I forgot to tell you that. So let's take a look at this. You can see all those good seasonings in here. There is, let's wipe this off so you can look at it. There's just a very thin layer of fat, so that's fine. That's gonna add some flavor when we cook this. What we're gonna do is let it continue to sit in this marinade and just get to room temperature because remember we talked about that with our prime rib dinner. It cooks better and more evenly if it's at room temperature when you put it in the oven. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna start to work on our mashed potatoes. Now today, we're gonna be making a dinner for two. So we're not gonna be using 500 mashed potatoes or potatoes for mashed potatoes and a whole bunch of other stuff. This is for two people, so we're gonna use five potatoes. I've got them sitting right here. We're gonna cut these up. We're going to put these into a pot with some stock and some onion, and we are going to get these things going. So again, we're just gonna cut these up. Remember, I like to leave the skins on. We'll get them going here, and then we will be ready to move to our pot after we get all these chopped. We're gonna get um, about another half an onion that we're gonna put in here because we don't want too much. Remember, we're not doing a, a big batch today as a small batch, an intimate dinner for two. Now, for those of you who've been married a long time, this is good for you because you know you're not going anywhere, your husband's not taking you out, and you know that if you want it to be special, you have to make it that way. So, this is for you ladies out there. This is what I'm gonna do, and I bet you it's what you're gonna do too. Think about it, ladies. If you've been married a long time like me, when was the last time you went out for Valentine's Day that wasn't, say, oh, I don't know, Carl's Jr.? I don't know. We're gonna make this special, and it's gonna be super easy. I'm gonna finish cutting these up. I'm gonna get an onion going, and we're gonna get these all in the pot. You guys know how to do this. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic, too, like usual. The difference being, when they're all cooked and ready, we're gonna add part of this beautiful red bell pepper. It's more for color than anything, but it will add a little bit of flavor to it. So what we're gonna do is slice this up real thin. I'll show you. We're gonna take the seeds out as normal and the membrane. And what we're gonna do is make some thin slices. We'll do it this way, it's probably easier. We'll do some thin slices and then we'll cut these into little pieces we're gonna set these aside and we're gonna cook these potatoes and then we're gonna fold these in at the end right when we're just about to take the potatoes off the oven or off the stove just so that they get a little bit tender and when we mix them all up you have some really pretty uh, really pretty colors in there and a little bit of extra flavor so I'm gonna finish this up then we're gonna move on to our onion that's about half the pepper so we're probably good because remember this is only for two people so we've got this and we're gonna get a small onion. We're gonna cut the ends off so that we can peel this real easy. Slice it right down the center. And that makes it real easy to take this outer layer on. 
take that off and set it aside. And we are going to chop these kind of fine. Um, we want these uh, onions to incorporate when we mix it all together. So, here we go. Ooh, and look, this onion is perfect. It's not even making me cry like usual. So we've got all these ingredients here ready. You know what I need? I need garlic. Let's get some. Garlic from our pantry, that's perfect. We haven't smashed some garlic in a while, ladies, so let's do that. We're gonna use three cloves for this. We like the flavor, it's delicious, and it's fun to smash. There's one. There's two. And there's three. And as usual, they come right out. We can just leave them smashed like that. It adds a ton of flavor. And it just gives that little extra something that our potatoes are gonna need. So what I'm gonna do next is grab a pot to put these in. I'm gonna set it on the stove and get it going and we're gonna move on to our next step. All right, let's get our potatoes in here and our garlic and our onions. We are going to use stock today with these because this is a special dinner and we want it to taste really, really good. Stock adds a little bit more flavor than, than just plain broth does. It's kind of like a concentrated broth. So let's get this all in there. And what we're gonna do is, before we even get these on the stove, we're gonna open this up and we are going to just cover our potatoes because we just want them to um, just suck up all of that yummy flavor in this stock. One of these containers should be just about perfect for the amount of potatoes we have. And what we wanna do is just get them to just be kind of floating in here. And as they sit on the stove, they're gonna soak up all that yummy flavor and it's gonna make them taste even better. In fact, we didn't need quite the whole thing. Now, there is salt in the stock, but we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit anyway. Just a pinch, because we wanna make sure that our, our water, which is our stock today, is salty like the sea. That's the way it's always supposed to be when you're cooking your potatoes or, or anything else like that. We'll set this on the stove. When they're about done, we're gonna throw in our peppers and then we're gonna go on from there. Okay, this is what we're gonna do with our little baby broccoli. I've got a, just a tiny bit of the onion that we chopped up in this uh, pan and I've also got um, one clove of garlic. We're gonna set that aside for a minute because what I want to do is make this really pretty. We are going to cut just the ends of all of our little baby broccoli off just so that they look beautiful and so that you feel like you're at a luxurious restaurant when you're eating this. We're going to put these into the pan, with into our little uh, saucepan there we have with um, a little bit of this stock left. We had some left, so what we're going to do is put that in there too. We want to incorporate all of our flavors to match. So what we're gonna have here is um, some beautiful broccoli. See how it looks? When you put this on your plate, it's gonna look even nicer. So we're gonna continue to slice those. Then we're gonna arrange them in here. And we're gonna put just a slight bit of that stock in there. We only want a little bit because we don't want it to be soggy. We just want it to kind of steam. So we're gonna do a little trick when we do this. And I will tell you about that. We're almost done. Now you can see how I've kind of layered these going both directions. That's because we don't want to have real mushy, soggy, cooked broccoli on the bottom and raw broccoli on the top. We kind of want to get a steam going on all of them so that they are just beautiful and delicious. So we've got this here. We're going to put just a bit of this on the bottom. Probably not even a quarter of a cup, just a little bit. Just gets everything a little bit wet and you can kind of see it in there. And what we're gonna do is we are actually going to put this in the oven when we put our, our uh, rack of lamb in because we just want it to get hot. We want all these little uh, broccoli stems to stay nice and tender and be delicious. And so we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to what we're gonna do with our rack of lamb. Okay, here is our rack of lamb. It is just about at room temperature now. We have our potatoes boiling and we have our broccoli set aside ready to go into the oven when we put this in. What we need to do now is take this out of this brine. We're gonna pat it dry. We wanna get all of this off because we're going to also put a crust on this. So we're going to let this little guy drip off. Make sure you got a good hold on it. 
and we are going to pat dry all of this off of here. We don't want anything that's gonna burn to be in there, so we don't really wanna have all kinds of milk products in there. It's uh, gonna be a really hot oven. We're gonna have it at 450 when we're ready to put it in there. And get most of this off very, very easily and without getting our cutting board too messed up. There we go. All right. Now, I'm gonna make a little suggestion here wipe off the bones so that you can hold on to them more easily as you're moving it around from this point on. They get a little slippery when they're in something like that and it's much easier and much safer for you if you do that. So we've got our rack of lamb sitting here ready. What we're gonna do next is put a rub on it. I'm gonna get all of our spices out, show you what we're gonna put together. I'm gonna clean up a little bit and we're gonna be back in just a second. Here's our rack of lamb all dried. We've got our herbs out. We've got some fresh rosemary and some fresh mint. Um, in my little concoction here, I have a tablespoon of granulated garlic, a tablespoon of granulated onion. I also have some thyme in here, about a tablespoon of that also. I've got um, a big pinch of salt and about a tablespoon of fresh cracked peppercorns. Oh my gosh, if you guys could smell this, Delicious, add a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil to this, dunk some bread in it, you're ready to go. Instead, we're gonna use it on our lamb. I have my misto all pumped up, it's ready to spray. I'm gonna spray some oil on here, just so that it helps um, everything, all the seasonings stick. And then we are going to put this on here liberally. We want it to be kind of like a crust. So what we're gonna do is put it on here and then rub it. Okay, and we're gonna do both sides. We're gonna press it in, and then give it a little rub to make sure it stays. It's okay if it falls off onto your uh, cutting board or your butcher's block like mine, because we're gonna flip it right on over on top of that and add some more. Now I do have my cast iron skillet out here. It's a big one and it's deep. It doesn't have to be quite so big if you don't have a really big one. I've got my oven heated at 450, and these are only gonna cook for about 12 to 18 minutes depending on how done you want them. Lamb traditionally is served pretty rare. Um, I don't like it super, super rare, but I do want it at least medium rare at, at the very most to have it cooked. So you're gonna want it to get to about 140 degrees when you put it in the oven. So let's get it all smashed on there. Let's see how it's looking on this side. That looks beautiful. We've got a little bit left. So we'll go ahead and sprinkle it on any areas we see that might be missing. Wrap it in. And see we've got a little pile here? Perfect. We're gonna push the sides onto it. Do this side also. And then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna cut this in half so that we can prop it up in our pan. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. This is an eight rib rack. We're going to cut this right down the center here. And you can see the difference between what it looked like when the uh, buttermilk got to the outside and when the buttermilk didn't. It's still very pink inside. Very beautiful. We're going to add all this yummy crust to our ends. We've got a little bit left so we can pour it out on here so we can get the rest on there. We don't want to miss any of that flavor when we cook these things. Now, what we're going to do now, set these aside for a second, kind of move this out of the way. Here is our cast iron skillet. Most recipes will tell you, when you look at these, that you want to cook these with the bone side down. So that's why these kind of are going to rest against each other like this. And the other thing you can do is you can put a little rack in here to help hold everything up or you can put another baking dish in here to help hold them up. So what we're gonna do is rest one on top of the other. We've got bone side down on both and they're gonna be delicious. We're also gonna add some more of this fresh rosemary. We're just gonna lay it across here, across where the bones are. And we're gonna lay some across the top and we're also gonna put some of this mint because mint is traditionally served with lamb in between our two layers here. 
It's gonna uh, flavor both layers that way and it's gonna be extra, extra delicious. Now the last little thing we're gonna do, let me wipe my hands off, is we are also gonna give this a drizzle of balsamic vinegar. This is so good. This is a local balsamic vinegar. It's from the San Filippo Olive Company. This is an 18 year balsamic. They're here locally in San Diego and you can definitely get them uh, at, around here. Um, I believe they have a website, sanfilippooolivecompany.com, so you can find it there if you're looking for the same things I use. And here we go. We're just gonna drizzle this on. You can see how thick it is. The reason it's that thick is because it's an 18 year balsamic. I'm going to do the same thing to the one underneath just a little bit. There we go. That is perfect. This is smelling delicious. I'm telling you, even if you don't like lamb, I think you're going to like this recipe. I know that my husband's not a huge fan, but he was willing to try it this time. And I told him that I promised I would bring some wow to this meal and we're definitely going to do that. I'm going to pop this in the oven and we're going to move on to what our dessert is going to be. While our rack of lamb is cooking and our broccoli is in the oven with it, we are going to make dessert and then pop it back in the freezer so it's ready when you are ready for dessert. We've got some ice cream here, and this is one of my favorite new gadgets I had. You can find this on my site if you go to wowmomcooking.tv and go to my store. This is on there. It makes some awesome scoops of ice cream. I'm gonna show you how it is. If any of you uh, remember going to the store and getting these kind of uh, squared out scoops like they had at thrifties when we were kids that's what this does it's awesome oh first we need to put some chocolate chips in the bottom you always got to have chocolate and then we're going to pop this ice cream out into our cup come on out of there Ooh. See that, a nice little square. Well, kind of a square, it's rounded out square. And then we're gonna do that again in this one. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna put on here. We are going to drizzle some of this. Um, this is a pear white balsamic vinegar that we're gonna drizzle over the top. And then this is a wild hibiscus flower. It's beautiful and it's just gonna make everything look good. Put this right on top here. We'll stick some of those chocolate chips inside of there so for a little surprise. There we go. Kind of flatten this guy out a little. And it's gonna look beautiful. And then we can also take some of this juice that's in here. Since it's Valentine's Day and we need that pink color on everything, we'll drizzle that on there too. And once we get it set, there we go. We're gonna pop these back in the freezer and this is gonna be our dessert to have with our delicious rack of lamb. After that's all done, we've got dessert ready to go and all we have to do is take it out and set it right onto the table. So we'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, our rack of lamb is almost done. I can smell it, it's smelling so good. We've got our potatoes ready to go and we're gonna add a little bit more of our fresh herbs in here. We've got some fresh dill, some chives and some fresh parsley. So I'm gonna chop up this dill and we're gonna add that in there and then we're gonna mix everything together. So we've got this. Oh, I love the way that fresh dill smells. It's so good. Let's see, let's push, put this into our potato mixture. Let's get some chives here. I'll cut some of this up real quick. We'll drop these in. They don't have to be perfect. We're just gonna rough chop them doesn't have to be uniform or anything like that. That's probably good, just a little handful. Remember, we're only making this for two people. That's why we're not use, using as much of anything that we normally would. We're gonna get a little bit of parsley on here and then we're gonna garnish it with some parsley too, just so it looks pretty. Now the parsley, usually I just smash it up just like that and then chop away. It just looks pretty and it is a nice thing to add. Okay, we're gonna set all the rest of this aside for a second. We're gonna bring our potato mixture in. You can see I put the little red peppers in there right as they were done. We've got a little bit of moisture left in there from the stock that we added. We're gonna give this a stir just to get all those 
um, delicious herbs in there. You can see we're kind of mixing them in a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of uh, heavy cream to this so that these potatoes are tasting delicious. We've probably got about three tablespoons in there and then we're going to add about three tablespoons of sour cream. Get the spoon out. Okay. It's one, two, three. I don't measure real accurately. You can be real accurate if you want to. It's not a problem. I'm going to grab my mixer that I have ready to go. And we are going to mix up these potatoes. It's going to get loud for a second, so just hang on because it's not going to take long. Okay. These look just about ready. Oops. So what we're going to do now is we're going to taste. We always have to taste everything because if we're not tasting it, we don't know if it needs something or it has too much of something. So let's get a good little forkful right here. Mmm, really good. But even with all that stock in there, it needs a little bit more salt. Sprinkle just a little bit more in there and we're going to give it a stir. And we're going to go ahead and get this into the dish we're going to serve it in. So let's move all of this out of the way. I'm going to get a towel and clean this up because we don't want any of this to be on our beautiful pink dishes that we're going to serve everything in. And here we have, this is a bowl for our potatoes. This right here, <clears throat> excuse me, this right here is called carnival glass. This belonged to my great grandmother. I have not a complete set, but I do have enough to do dinner for two. So we're gonna do the uh, potatoes in here, and you'll start to, sorry about that, you'll start to see how good these things look. They are delicious. They are full of some yummy flavors that maybe our regular mashed potatoes don't usually have. You can see the little bits of the red pepper in there. And this bowl is just perfect. Now remember, we only used five potatoes, and look how much we got out of this. There we go. We're gonna grab some of our parsley, just because we want it to look pretty. We're gonna stick it in there. Break off another couple pieces. And I've got one more that's gonna make it look just right. And there we have it. We can cover this to keep it warm set it aside and get started on that rack of lamb so we can plate everything up and show you what dinner is going to look just like. So hang on to your hats. This is going to blow you away. Here is our Valentine's dinner for two, all ready to go and move it on to the table. I took out our dessert too so you can see what it looked like. We've got our crusted pork chops, our baby broccoli, our wonderful mashed potatoes that have all kinds of herbs and a little bit of that red in there because we get to put the red bell pepper. The other thing I did was because we needed a little salad. I cut up some heirloom tomatoes, I added some balsamic vinegar, and a little bit of that pear vinegar to tie everything together. We've got some uh, garlic bread to go with it. We've got your choice of a beautiful red wine or an Italian soda. Thank you so much for hanging with Wow Mom today. We want to thank our uh, sponsor today, which is PMLB Media. Be sure to go on their site, pmlbmedia.com, and check their mid-season lineup. Part of it is me. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for joining us. You can find all my recipes on wowmomcooking.tv or wowmomcooking.com and find all the little gadgets I use on my store on the site. Until next time, keep cooking with wow.